Yes, everybody, welcome back to the channel, Stephen Housen. This headline, oh, we saw this a little bit earlier and we've got to react to it. So, uh, Nazar Kinsella is reporting that United have been alerted about Callum Wilson's availability, who Newcastle could sell for just 18 million as they need to raid, raise funds. Why Manchester United have been alerted to him? Why Manchester United have alerted to him? What is it just like literally for clicks? Like that's such a man. Let me just break down this this whole thing. Manchester United have been alerted to Callum Wilson's availability, who Newcastle could sell for just eighteen million as they need to raise funds. I'm gonna have to source check you on. Okay, have United been alerted to him? We've just got this whole new footballing department in place. Are we really going to do deals on the back of someone becoming available at 3.30 in the afternoon? Let's get it done. Newcastle could sell. If Newcastle could sell him, why would he only go for 18 million, by the way? What's his contract situation? Why is it only needs... Like, and if Newcastle needs to raise funds... Uh, can they not sell someone to Saudi League? Would they not get more money than 18 million? Would they really want to sell to someone that realistically at the moment we're top four opposition for them? And this is before I even get into the suitability of where I think Callum Wilson's suitable for Manchester United or not. Oh, I think he probably is, but come on, man. Come on. This is absolute fucking rhubarb. Do United need a backup striker? Yeah, million percent. Is Callum Wilson going to come to United to be a backup striker? I don't think so. I don't think so. I really don't think so. Just come on, man. Come on. Saudi's also that like, Newcastle have got so much money, and I know like they need money for FFP. But there's there's a one thing between needing money for FFP and screwing yourselves by selling to your uh, nearest rivals. Now they don't need money they need money on the balance books right they are cash rich transactionally poor that makes sense like they need to show that they're making more money right so but they don't necessarily need loads more money come on man come on so anyway that's that um the Barada approach was super secret, according to Adam Crafton. Uh, United's approach in appointing Omar Barada as CEO was so discreet that senior figures at Old Trafford didn't even know about it until Saturday afternoon, after which an emergency leadership meeting was called. Meeting attendees were promised cultural change within United. Patrick Stewart stressed the club was now committed to installing a football-first culture. Um, Neil Custis with The Sun is saying that uh, the head of rehabilitation and physiotherapy, Robin Sadler, has left Manchester United. Do we think there's anything in that? That is like over the weekend, it was the geezer that does all the negotiations for Manchester United. When you look at Manchester United at the moment and you look at what we're achieving, there's some words doing some heavy lifting there, as a football club, do you look at them and go, wow. Manchester Manchester United's negotiations are fucking on point. No, you don't, do you? You go, Manchester United couldn't raise... Oh. United are bad at negotiations. I, I can't even describe quite how bad United are at negotiations other than to say United are really bad at negotiations. And that's all you need to know. Like, we sell our academy prospects for fuck all... And we pay over the odds or you know, pay the complete asking price every single time someone tells us to. So head of negotiations leaving Manchester United. Okay, cool. Now, the other thing you think about Manchester United at the moment is, wow, all of our fucking players are out injured. Robin Sadler, head of rehabilitation and physiotherapy, has left Manchester United. Crimea, motherfucking river. Was anyone sitting there thinking, wow, Manchester United have got lots of resilient players. They never seem to get injured. When they are injured, they seem to get back really, really fast. I wonder what's going on there at that there, Carrington. No, you don't. You go, fuck me, when's he coming back? Oh, it's actually longer than we thought it was going to be. Cool. United seem to be 
clearing out a shitload of people sound. I really couldn't care less because the people that were clearing out, I don't seem to think like, and do you know what? John Murta, you're fucking next, brother. What have you actually fucking done? Too many fucking people at this club sitting in positions, not losing their jobs over absolute dog shit performances. Time to go. Sin a bit. Steve-O says the exodus has begun. That's one way to call it, yeah. yeah fair enough. Um, KC says couldn't raise a tent. Robert Brennan says I can only see one or two loans coming in, no money to spend. I agree with that. Uh, Acorn says the magic sponge guys left the physio department at United. Uh, Hayden Bradley says Charlton, Carrick, Cole, Callum, what's in common? Well, n nothing is in common between those players. Bobby Charlton never played for Newcastle. Michael Carrick never played for Newcastle. If you're saying that they're all from the northeast, well, they're not because Andy Cole is not from the northeast. He just played for them. Callum Wilson, I don't even know where he's from, actually. I, I suspect it isn't Newcastle, though. So what what is in common? I, I genuinely, I don't know. Unless you're saying that all the names begin with a C. But actually, it's only the surnames that begin with a C, and Wilson isn't a C. So what have they got in common? By the sounds of it, fuck all. Um... Keith says the Jude Bellingham story alone was enough for Murta to get the sack. Can you imagine how much Mer um, Jude Bellingham would cost right now? Can you imagine? Can you even imagine how much absolutely astronomical prices you would need to put in front of Real Madrid to even think about signing Jude Bellingham? It ain't happening. But can you even imagine how much it would even cost for them to go, go on and you can talk to him? Would it, would it be 300? It might be 300 million. Uh, Brian says, generally won't recognise this club in a few years. So many positive things happening. Seems that way. Uh, Corn THDL says, don't understand. Why not go for Garassi? The upside is more than worth the risk. It's worth so cheap you can turn around and send it back to a Bundesliga team in the summer for no loss. What is he going for? Um, James says, someone paid for that stupid comment. Yes, they did. Uh, and this might be another one. We'll find out in a second when I read it. Uh, Joshua Boa with a super chat there. It says, you ever watched Rooney Street Striker back when it was on telly? I reckon it would transfer well to YouTube content. Yes. Um, yeah, it would be good YouTube content. I agree. Benjamin says, I see Spencer is doing a podcast about hashtag and how to run a football club. Could we see you on there one day? It would be very interesting. Um, yeah, I spoke to Spencer before he started it. He told me he was going to be doing it and uh, and has asked me if I'll go on. Um, so I will go on as soon as I can make it happen because obviously he's in another part of the country to me. So as soon as we can make it happen, we'll make that happen. But I get on really well with Spencer. We've had plenty of sort of off-the-record conversations about our experiences running the club or running our clubs. Um, so it'd be really interesting to um, sit down and put one on record with things that you know we are able and comfortable to talk about. Um... Daniel Berry says, oh, I don't know what he's talking about there. Uh, Ed says, does this club only want players who love the physio room? Well, isn't that something that this new football front office is meant to be dealing with? Because like, like I said last week, I can sit here, I can do some scouting. And we can look at all the things that are publicly available from watching the player to getting hold of the stats. But there's the things that you don't know. Like the 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 real in depth things about their injuries and the real in depth things about character and how they are in training and are they late and what are they like as a genuine person, those are the things that us lot watching on YouTube we'll never know unless we happen to know somebody who actually knows them and even though we have some connections we don't really have a lot of connections where we'll find out exactly what people are like in training, so it's very hard for us to make those leaps. Um, we can do loads of scouting about people who look good. But then, oh, they didn't work out when they came to United. Was that because they weren't good when we looked at them? No, it's because Manchester United is quite hard to adapt to. And those are the things that, those intangibles are the things that we can't look at on YouTube. Um, Bob says, Callum Wilson, I reckon Jockey Wilson would be a better buy. Um, just joking in case Murta is watching. <laughs> Uh, Shazeb says we need to redevelop our sports science department and analysis department needs to be the new leaders in new developments a million percent it's not well uh, did you see um, United are recruiting um, some people 
um, from Manchester Met. And uh, there was also something someone tagged me the other day where it's got the Wolves players wearing sort of um, glasses would be the, the word or goggles that shining um, bright daylight onto the tops of their eyelids. That's the kind of shit that I'm saying. I, I want to see people wearing lab coats at Carrington or Nutsford if that's where they're going to be building this new gaff. Uh, KC says, how did United and Arsenal for that matter since they were linked to let Marcus Leonardo slip to Benfica from Santos for pocket change? <sighs> Benfica, it might be the best landing ground in Europe for any player coming from South America. The hit rate, it's not 100%, but it might be over 80%, which is ridiculous. Um, and then they'll move them forward into another European team, a, a monstrous profit. I'd love to know what the finances look like at Benfica. They must be brilliant. They must be fucking spotless. Steve-O says, I get the feeling we're going to get another underwhelming deadline day deal again next week. You might be right. Uh, Keith Kelly says, what do I make of the Adam Crafton article about Ineos getting more control on the commercial side? I think it's when, not if the Glazers are gone. It's, it's confusing to me because being on any project especially with something so linked to my name, the way the Glazers are linked to Manchester United, I couldn't imagine giving up all the control of all the things that matter. But they've proven to themselves and, and to everybody else in the world, they don't know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to the football side. That's fine. Give that up to someone who might know better, maybe. But they also don't have a fucking pot of glue what's going on when it comes to the commercial side because United have fallen so far behind our competition on the commercial side. And it's not just the, the commercial side and the football side, but just as a whole philosophy in general. When was the last time you heard of anything that Manchester United are market leaders in? There's one league table that we're top of, and it's how much our owners have rinsed out of our football team. Nobody else comes fucking close to us. We are all-star fucking number one, greatest of all time in terms of being completely and utterly fucking molested by our owners. Nothing else has screamed innovation or unique or innovative, which I guess is innovation. Different word. Maybe that's innovative. Um, or forward thinking or revolutionary or transformative. Everything we do is fucking slow and late and labored and too expensive and not well thought out and far too reactionary. Set of pricks. Uh, Jarvis says Wilson is a step up from Vegost. Okay, maybe. Uh, Masus says, do you think it could be a good idea to give McNeil a chance instead of this Chupo Moten and Callum Wilson's great work? Mm, maybe. I mean, he's... yeah. Do you know what? Ten minutes wouldn't hurt, would it? I mean, but I'm sure he's seen him in the first team to get any sort of uh, inkling of what's going on. Um. LDT says, afternoon, Steve. Have I heard of anyone at United, players or officials that have watched my account or Paddock? What was the feedback? Yeah, loads of them do. And literally loads of them do. And this goes back to fucking 2015 when I was first told by a couple of academy players that they watched, well, they said all of it. They probably don't watch all of it, but I guess that means that, you know, they do watch. Um, I know that people at United watch and people at United, most people that work for United do so because they're fans. You know, when you're talking about you know, the different sales departments, the ticket department, I, I know this, I know people in there who watch the channel. Uh, lots of people in there who watch the channel. And when we're, you know, sort of mingling around, obviously Cam works there, used to work for us. But we know so many people that are involved at Manchester United. Yeah, of course we, uh, we end up, finding out that they watch it and stuff like that. So, and from what I can gather, people at the club quite enjoy what we do here and over at Paddock. So, and the, the stuff that I do with Rio. So, yeah, largely positive because it comes from a pace, place of, you know, being a real fan. So, how could they get mad at it? Uh, the Grim Commoner says, Owen Wilson would be more useful. We aren't going for someone in, why aren't we going for someone in the championship with potential to strike big in the Premier League? I think these things are going to take a minute to set up. Um, NC says, but the noodle sponsors. Anyone else can get a noodle sponsor. Um, Ed says, I go for a, a loan to buy for Jonathan David in January. 18 months left in his deal. I think he has the attributes to adapt. 
Um, Jonathan David, I'm pretty sure his World Cup appearances fucked him up a little bit because his stock was really on the rise up until then and then I completely phoned it in from that moment, I reckon. Did I rate Mandzukic? Yeah. Was he ever right for United, though? I don't know. Probably yes, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Brian says, if we're getting Wilson, uh, I'd rather get him on loan than pay £18 million for a 31-year-old. Uh, Notch says, Real wheels will only really start turning in the summer. I think you're right, mate. I think that's going to be when we see the bulk of it. We can have investment that goes towards our FFP at that time. Yeah. That's, I don't see any other way for it, really. Unless they've just been trying to downplay our finances, which is probably a good move because we, we so often fucking tell people we're going to spend all sorts of money and then you get your ass handed to you because people know that you've got all sorts of money to spend. It's fucking ridiculous. But yeah. Uh, Court Star said, we're not signing anyone, so uh, they will keep making up different rumours. Yes and no, because at some point you have to just be like, all right, United have said they're not going to sign anyone. There's no point in us doing this. Um, do I watch other football YouTube channels? Yes, I do. How about that? Uh, righty, I'm going to wrap it up. Oh, it's a couple more coming. Ben Kelly says, hope you're doing well. Just joined. I'd rather focus on the boardroom and facilities until the summer, to be honest. I still think we probably need some players in now if we can find them. Um, rather pay 20 million for Benzema for six months, says Alex. That might be an option. Sounds like going Arsenal, though. Um, Paul Murray says, surely Ineos aren't going to sanction any moves for players who won't benefit us. Going off their pattern of being ruthless, I can't see it. Yeah, I, I, that's my sort of estimation in that front as well. Um, I think they'd probably be rather be patient than make mistakes because we've rushed into stuff loads as a club and made mistakes. So why would you continue to do the things that have hurt us so much at the moment? Especially when it comes to sanctioning players. Because we've got a tip uh, tiptoe along the tightrope with FFP, how can you um, sanction potential mistakes? I, I think that'd be mental. Um, Sidar says, can we sign Osman in the summer? Surely not. How could they justify that? And then who's your first choice? Osman, probably, right? All right, cool. So why do we pay 80 million for Hoyland? Do you know what I mean? Again, it, under, it undermines what's been going on. Anyway, I'm wrapping up, but thanks as always for joining me. Hope you're all having a good day. And uh, I'll see you fuckers in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here.